when I got in the Army, they gave us all our uniforms and everything, you know. However, nurses never had to go through training or anything. But uh, this time in the Air Force, some general had volunteered the Air Force to evacuate the soldiers, the wounded, from Korea. So the Air Force had to quick come up with air evac people. So bang, we went to Japan without any uniforms. We just wore our civilian clothes, just wore slacks and whatever I had. And in fact, they gave us a foot locker and that was shipped. And then we carried a suitcase. So when I got there, my foot locker didn't come. And it didn't come and it didn't come. But uh, I had my suitcase, I just lived out of the suitcase. And one day I went down to the, the, little, the office for the Air Force. We, we had rugged places to live, was in tents. When, uh, we lived in a tent and uh, the office was a, a little tent. And I went down there to see what was going on. And here was my footlocker standing up on end with a ply board on top and they were using it for a table. We were based in Japan and we lived in dependent housing. Well, later we did. The first, at first we lived in tents. I went to Itsuzuki first, the Shia. I was in three bases in Japan and, and Tachikawa. Three. The first, my first base was Tachikawa, was a, a Shia. And that was very rugged, that was just tents. In the morning we'd get in, we'd go down and get in an airplane. When we were flying the Pacific, it was C-54s. They were the four engine planes. These are two engine planes. And uh, the Air Force was a supply route for the, for the, for the, for, for the troops all over uh, Korea. So we'd get in an airplane and we'd make a little stop here and lit, drop off something and go someplace else and maybe pick up something in someplace else. And when we got the airplane emptied, we'd go to a holding station someplace and clean out the airplane, drop down the straps, and pick up patients. And they had, have, had been hold, uh, holding in a tent. And so the tent usually had a doctor and a nurse. And uh, they would, I don't, I, I never, I was there one time, I guess, for a very short time. And one time I was there when we were getting ready to, to give up the pace. And uh, the, the generals had said we could get the patients, the wounded, back to the hospital faster than anything else. And that was right, you know. And to prove it, this, we were, we gave up this base and we were, everybody was leaving. And so I was the last plane to leave. And as we sat on the end of the runway, which was just a flat piece of land, the runways were, those must have been wonderful pilots. And they were all reserved, almost all of them reserved. But those, no, no formal airfields at all, you know, just places to, flat places. We were sitting waiting to take off and this truck came roaring up. Hey, wait, wait, wait. And he had picked up this soldier with a big hole in his chest. And so they loaded him on my plane. I was already overloaded. So we have to say that we really picked him up right off the battlefield and took him to the hospital. And that's where I, they really appreciated my cold water. One time they were hungry and they, were, they had been fighting all day. So our crew, we hadn't eaten yet, so I picked up the cruise boxes in my mind. I usually have a tech sergeant that went with me. And we had the pilot and the co-pilot and sometime the navigator and then me and my crew. So we had five boxes. So usually in the box was a piece of fried chicken and a sandwich and a, a boiled egg. And I went down the hall and down the aisle and gave everybody one something of everything. And we got back to the very end and here was this little Korean. He'd been watching me all the way. And I got to him, and all I had left was a hard-boiled egg, which I gave him, and I swear he ate it shell and all. Sometimes we picked up ambulatory patients, 
and I had picked up a few, and I, we also picked up the enemy, and I was t taking this big North Korean on the plane, and this big Texan over here said, is that a North Korean? I said, no, 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 it's a South Korean. You know, sometimes a lie is necessary. And of course, whether he believed me or not, he had to because I was an officer. <laughs> had two flat tires. You can't think of a plane having a flat tire. One of us, when I was in the Azores, we took, blew it on the takeoff. So we could circle around, decide where we wanted to land. So we landed someplace where they could take care of us. And the other time, I was in, we had gone up to North Korea to pick up some people, and we landed on, on landing. We blew the tire on landing. We had to phone back and have them send up another plane. Well, in the meantime, they didn't know what they were going to do with me. This is way up in North Korea. All they had was tents and all of them, but it happened that all the men were out fighting, so they gave me one of their tents and their sleeping bag. And so I was there for a couple of days, but they had a seven hole, you know, and if I needed to go, I had to have somebody stand outside. We were playing bridge one night and it was raining. And I said, I'm sorry, somebody's gonna to have to take a walk with me. So they had to round up raincoats. And I don't know who was happier to leave, me or them. 